The friction circle really is all about the reaction the car has as far as you, the driver, is concerned. Unfortunately, in the 60s, when the engineers, and I'm a mechanical engineer, so I can do a little bashing here, they uh, came up with this, this naming convention, this sign convention, which says you cut something and you analyze the forces where you cut it, and that's called a free body diagram. And so what the engineers in the 60s said, okay, well, this is breaking because the force is acting in the retarding sense this way. So every single G analyst that's sold out there today is bass backwards compared to what you, the driver, feels. It's counterintuitive. You step on the brakes and, and, the, and the trace comes back. Wait a minute. I'm stepping on the brake. I feel my helmet swing forward. Well, it just so happens that Mike Valentine, when he came up with the very first commercially available G analyst, which actually defines the friction circle, he used that same convention because that is just how it's been done. And when I told Mike, he was at Mid-Ohio and he sat in on this friction circle talk and he ran out to his car, he just had made this. And he came up with this very box here and he handed it to me. He said, Ed, this is yours. What is it? It's a G analyst. I just came up with it. I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, let me show you. So we went over to his car. He had a, an RSR Porsche and he had one in his car. And this goes underneath the, the, the seat close to the center of the car. And this goes on your dash. It's got suction mounts and everything. And what happens is when you drive and you hit the brake, the trace comes back. And I'm thinking, Mike, what are you doing? You know, this is cool that you're able to have, excel you're able to have accelerometers in here that measure the forces, but watch this. When you flip this thing 180 degrees, all of a sudden, the trace that it puts out on the screen matches what you, the driver, feels. And think about this, the fuzzy dice always points to the tire or tires that have the most traction, right? Squeeze down on the brake, weight gets transferred to the front, the front prats. Fuzzy dice are pointing to the ones that have the most traction, okay? Contact patches on the front grow. Contact patches in the rear shrink, because remember, the total area is a constant at all times. So you as a driver with just hands and feet control now have a way of proactively allocating the amount of traction that you need at certain parts of the racetrack. You go into, not go into, you are in turn one here, the left-hander. Which tires do you think are the most important? Car has already taken a set. You're going, you're making a left. Which tires are the most important? Say it. Somebody? Right. right. The right side tires, because they're the most heavily loaded. Very good. And obviously the sweeper around there, which is nothing like a, nothing more than a big skid pad as far as I'm concerned. Most important tires? The right-hander, number two? Left. left it, well, the left side. And that's where the fuzzy dice are pointing. So now you have a way of, of allocating traction based on moving the fuzzy dice. And when Jim says squeeze, what he's talking about is not spiking the brakes hard. You squeeze down on the brakes. Remember that the, the egg toss? You catch it like that, you slow it down. What happens is you come up and right around here you're starting to get some feedback. Tires are starting to make a little bit of noise because what is noise? Noise is vibration. So when you have the tire starting to break loose, remember the things rotating, so it's supposed to be stopped on the ground as long as it's rotating, but now you know, you're know you going deep, deep, deep into the brake pedal, all of a sudden you've got this thing stick slipping, and you hear noise. That's the tread block elements vibrating within the sides of creating an echo, and that's why slicks are pretty quiet when they slide. There's no echo space, okay? So what, if you think you're gonna end up out here going for a lot of brake pedal, where do you really end up? 
Remember a sliding tire? Because, you know, anything past 10, it starts to slide. You're down here at a 7, aren't you? Okay, you might as well take the steering wheel and hand it over to the passenger or the instructor because it doesn't do you any good because the sliding tire can't steer, which is why we have ABS. It tries to keep that tire rolling. Okay.